watching my good fiend Roger Walker on Slasher Pepper. Enjoy. <laughs> Frank Hennelotter's 1990 Frankenhooker. What a bizarre but awesome movie. Frank came up with the story and title in the office of James Glickenhaus. Frank Hennelotter wanted to make a movie called Insect City. Glickenhaus didn't want to put money into that movie and asked if he had another concept. At that moment, Frank Hennelotter came alive. He came up with the story piece by piece, or should I say, body part by body part. The entire movie was basically written out vaguely there. The only major plot part that wasn't written out yet was the super crack. When James asked for the title, he came up with Frank and whore, Frank and slut, Frank and prostitute, until finally, Frank and hooker. James asked if Frank had any other movie ideas. Frank said he always wanted to do another basket case movie. James asked which one he would do, Frankenhooker or Basket Case 2. Frank replied, why not both? Frankenhooker and Basket Case 2 were shot back to back and both released in 1990. They shot Frankenhooker first, then took a three to four week break, and then much of the same crew from Frankenhooker returned to film Basket Case 2. When casting began, Frank chose James Lawrence as Jeffrey, our protagonist. James got a lot of notice for his part in 1987's Street Trash. Frank Hennelotter made a phone call to James saying, Hi, my name is Frank Hennelotter. I'm working on a new project called Frank Nooker and I want to use you for this, okay? Bye. James never thought about it again until six months later. He got a call from the casting directors. They sent him the script. He thought it was a bizarre script and wasn't sure he should take it. Frank Hennelotter convinced him to do it, so he trusted him and was on board. While filming the scene in the room of all the hookers, there was a sort of a feud going on between the two groups. Half of the hookers were porn stars, and the other Playboy magazine girls. The Playboy girls would talk to James about how gross those porn stars are, and the porn stars would talk to James about how gross the Playboy girls are, spreading their legs in magazines. How dare they? To not cause any more troubles, he obviously agreed with both sides. According to the cast and crew, the scene blowing up the hookers was most fun to film. The actresses had to get in a certain position and they'd recreate mannequins in that same position and blow those up. They hired a pyromaniac, but that guy had obviously never blown up hookers before. When they first tried to blow up a hooker, there was a soft bang and only a bit of smoke coming out of the mouth. Frank Hamlotter told the pyromaniac to triple the explosives, maybe even quadruple it. The scene was about sparkles and firework. At the time the VFX guy, Gabe Artellos, was disappointed because he expected brains and organs to fly around. Frank Hanukkah's initial release was delayed because of difficulties obtaining an R rating. One of the representatives of the MPAA called Frank Hanalotter up one day and told him, Congratulations, you're the first film rated S. Frank asked, S for sex? And they said, no, S for shit. The movie didn't get a wide theatrical release and only made $205,068 against a budget of $2.5 million. However, the movie was a big hit on video. They released a special version that was a talking box. You could press the button on the VHS and the VHS would ask, Want a date? The gimmick made the movie sell more on video. James Lawrence thinks that if the movie had a wider theatrical release, it would have been a much bigger hit. And I definitely gotta agree with him. I personally love this film and think that if it had a wider theatrical release worldwide, it would have been a B-movie classic. I mean, what teen would not watch a movie entitled Frankenhooker? Incredible. You're pissing me off, Roger. Stop! 